Welcome back. In this lecture, we will talk about performance tuning goals. So, let's start. In an earlier lecture, I talked about three performance tuning goals. Improve the speed, reduce the cost or reduce the failure rate. The point is, which one do you target? Which one do you want to target? Do you want to improve the speed, reduce the cost or minimize or eliminate the failures? That's a tough question, right? In a typical case, for any performance tuning requirement, we want to achieve all of these, right? We want to reduce the cost as well as improve the performance and also make sure that we are not getting any errors from our Spark job. But how do we achieve all these three things? How can we achieve all this? Because we cannot leave any one of these. What is the approach to achieving all this? The answer is very simple work towards improving the health of your application or your job or your query right improve the health and you can achieve all the three together but what do we mean by improving the health what is health and what do we mean by improving the health let's try to understand it with some uh, examples i have listed four examples here but this is not an exhaustive list uh, there could be many things that you can consider as a health problem for your application or your job. But to understand the idea, let's talk about these four. So the first one is over provisioning or wasting resources. What does it mean? Think of it. You have a job. It is running with 16 CPU cores and let's say 4 GB memory per core. That's the total resources you have given. You executed your job, you are doing benchmarking and then you measured the CPU utilization and memory utilization and you realized that your CPU utilization is 40%. Memory utilization is also somewhere around 40 to 50%. What does it mean? You have over provisioned your job with extra CPU capacity and extra memory. Only 40% of that is being used. So you can eliminate those extra resources, extra CPU, extra memory and do it with less. So that's one kind of thing that you can do and reduce the cost without impacting the speed right similarly there is another scenario where we see a struggle for resources caused by incorrect configuration or design or code so what does it mean your job is struggling for resources and that is caused by various reasons maybe some incorrect configuration or incorrect design or incorrect code implementation but what do we mean by struggling for resources one simple example could be like your uh, spark application is processing data but spark processes all the data partition by partition right we process data partitions in spark we don't process the entire data at once and let's assume your partitions are skewed so you have some very tiny small partitions 1 mb 2 mb size of the partition but you have some very huge partitions uh, like 500 mb 1 gb 2 gb kind of partitions so those large partitions are your skewed partitions and in a typical case spark will be struggling for resources mainly struggling for memory to fit those large partitions those skewed partitions into the memory and um, do processing with for that so that's a struggle for the resource. You will eliminate the struggle, do something, maybe change some configurations or change the design and make sure that partitions are not skewed and that struggle goes away, right? And that is also a kind of health improvement for your job or for your application. Uh, another thing is doing extra or unnecessary work. So how do you understand that? Uh, let's uh, assume your Spark is uh, or your Spark job is processing some data, but average partition size is much larger than the memory given to process uh, each partition. And as a result, Spark is spilling that data to disk. So in that process, Spark is taking data from memory, saving it into disk, doing some part of the uh, partition is being processed and then it is bringing uh, data back from disk to memory. In all that, uh, Spark is doing a lot of unnecessary extra work, moving data from memory to disk, disk to memory, then again memory to disk, disk to memory, all that is unnecessary work. And that's also a health related problem. You fix the health, Spark will stop doing unnecessary work and you will improve the performance speed as well as you might also improve the resource cost. Similarly, the last one I listed here is waiting for something. For example, you gave uh, 10 CPU cores 
uh, for processing your application, processing your data, and you have 20 partitions. So at a time, maximum 10 partitions can be processed because you gave 10 CPU cores. And then remaining 10 partitions will be waiting for CPU cores to become available. So that's waiting for something, waiting for resource, waiting for CPU. Similarly, you may have a scenario where uh, you have 10 CPU cores and at a time you are processing 10 partitions, but one partition out of those 10 is excessively large. Nine partitions are small, they processed, they finished very quickly, but 10th partition is large. So the 10th partition will take some extra time to get processed, whereas nine other are already done, but your job is waiting for the 10th process to complete right, 10th partition to complete. Otherwise, your job is not complete. So that is where also you are waiting for something. So waiting for something is another health related problem. So these are some health related problems. There are many other we will learn throughout the course about various health related problems. But the point is, you improve the health of your application, you improve the health of your job or a particular query. And then you can attack all these three problems or three goals at a time at once you can improve the speed you can reduce the cost and you can also make sure that you are not getting resource failure related problems like out of memory exceptions etc so that should be the approach for your performance during